I really enjoy the history of Beyblade. Uh, it's probably my favorite content to cover, sort of the lore and the history behind the franchise, especially during the original series or the Plastic Generation era, Bakuten Shoot Beyblade as it's known in Japan, or just Beyblade as it's known in North America. The other day I was sort of just contemplating sort of the history of the franchise and its roots. And while I would like to take sort of an extensive look at the franchise in a much longer form video than I've done so far, that's kind of further out. But it got me thinking about Baytubers. And there's a lot, there's a lot that have been around for a long time. Beyblade geeks have been around for a long time at this point. Jojo has been around for a long time. As far as plastic gen goes, I think Drigger GT is probably one of the bigger ones that comes to mind as far as sort of regular content goes. But the question that popped up in my head was, who was the first Baytuber? And the qualifications, I think, for being a Baytuber is releasing fairly consistent content on Beyblade. So maybe not to this day, but for a period of time releasing Beyblade content. Now, one of the things that I'm gonna om omit from that is like AMVs or anime clips. I don't think that qualifies. That's not really content creation in the same way. There's some artistic value to AMVs that I really enjoyed when I was younger, but for the purposes of this video and sort of my exploration into this question, I'm going to be looking at physical Beyblade content that either revolves around the lore or the products. And there was one name that came to mind that I was already familiar with. It's a guy that I talk to frequently and have talked to for a long time. In fact, at one point on an older channel, I interviewed him. I think I might have done the first Beyblade interview <laughs> on YouTube. Um, but that's, that's another video. YouTube has a handy feature where if you type in your search keyword and then before whatever specific date, it will list out all of the content before that date. So I went looking for what could be the earliest Beyblade battle video. Now, I don't know what channels have been deleted or what content has been deleted, but the earliest thing that I could find was from November 6, 2006, and it is a Beyblade tournament at Expo TNT in Mexico. So I will show that video right now where you guys can see it. It looks like it's an anime convention. Pretty cool that they're having a sort of mini tournament here. I don't think this is an official tournament. I think it's just something that was happening at an anime convention, but it is very cool to see. I'll have links to all of these videos down in the description below if you guys want to check them out as well. But I thought it was super cool to find this. The second channel and sort of runner up would be Beyblade Go Shoot, who has 215 subscribers and whose earliest video is June 17th, 2006, which is Beyblade Random Battles. So the channel itself has a decent number of videos, I guess. Uh, it's, it's hard to sort of classify whether or not this would qualify as a Baytuber. So the channel has five uploads. They're all battle videos, but I, I don't know. Is that enough to be a, to be qualified as a Baytuber? So only two of those videos were uploaded um, in 2006 and then another a year later, another a year later, and then two a year later. So definitely uh, spread apart quite a bit. I'm not sure if that qualifies. I don't know if that's consistent enough. And it's only five videos, but it is worth mentioning that some of the earliest, like just straight up battles that weren't at a convention or whatever, or an event, this guy seems to be one of the earliest. I don't know if he is the earliest, but definitely one of the earliest. So moving on from that, we've got Keyblader007, whose first uh, Beyblade video and first, like, I want to say viral. So the conditions for a viral video are a little bit different now than they were back then. Like if a video hit 10K on YouTube back then, that was big. If it hit 100K, that was monumental. That was huge. Um, so the video in question is Beyblade Battle with Drigger V2. Get him, Drigger! Woo! It's an iconic video. It's got 810,000 views and was published 17 years ago, August 12th, 2006. So the reason that I think Keyblader qualifies over the others 
is he uploaded consistently. So he's got playlists of just tons and tons and tons of different battles. So I remember talking to Keyblader and he was super obsessed with Beyblade. He actually went to the New York qualifier for the uh, world championship and unfortunately was eliminated, but he was there. You can actually see him in the line at the, uh, the, the event in the official video, which is pretty cool that he's in there. He was super into it, and he's maybe one of the first people that I'm aware of that used a proxy service that far back and ordered thousands of dollars worth of Beyblade stuff that ended up shipping to him in, I think it was a refrigerator box. Like, we're talking obscene amounts of Plastic Gen stuff. His collection was insane. He still has a fairly sizable collection, which we'll cover in a minute, but uh, he got a ton of stuff in. For a while, he sold on eBay. <laughs> Might have been one of the very first Beyblade resellers as well, especially certainly in North America that was reselling consistently because he had so much extra stuff. I even bought from him at uh, at one point. I got, I think, some, some of the dark Beyblades from the movie. Uh, I think I bought a Drigger V2 from him. I bought a few, few different things. I think I bought an... I think I bought a stadium from him. I'm not 100% sure. I wanna say maybe, maybe? That might've been Bay Brad. If you're not familiar, Bay Brad is the founder of the WBO, which we might do a video on at some point as well, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. Anyway, so Keyblader ended up with an obscene amount of stadiums. And so he, most of his videos were in different stadiums. He would revisit stadiums periodically, but he had an, ins he had like, uh, I, it's got to be all of the Hasbro stadiums from Plastic Gen, and he had an obscene amount of the Takara Tomy, or well, I guess it was just Takara at that point before the merger, a bunch of Takara stadiums as well, including ones that I haven't seen since. Um, just huge stadiums, really small stadiums, tower stadiums, inflatable stadiums, like this guy literally had everything. Now, if you want to go check out the videos, I'll have a link to his channel below. Um, where you can check out some of them. The quality is not great back then. You got to remember, most of us that were on YouTube at that point were still using like actual tapes, like uh, I think like digital eight tapes or whatever, the really small ones. Uh, some of us might have been fortunate enough to have like an actual digital video camera, which would have used like the little discs or like an SD card or whatever, but that was st still fairly new technology. So most of us kids had actual tape recorders, um, which is hilarious how far things have come. Now I'm filming all of my content on my iPhone, which is nuts. I don't know. There's no rewind button anymore. It's weird. I think he later takes the cake. Like he uploaded consistently for I years. Uh, a lot of his videos did really, really well. Like uh, I mean, we're talking consistently. He's some of his stuff is at you know 10k, 100k, 50k, um, half a million views. So he was consistently getting views. The issue was that in most of his videos, he was playing music in the background, copyrighted music. So a lot of his stuff got striped um, or wasn't eligible for monetization. Additionally, Metal Fight launched around that time, and while he tried to get into it, I'm not sure that he was as into Metal Fight as he was Plastic Gen. I don't think it was necessarily his thing. I think he liked the anime all right. I, he still watches Beyblade to this day. He watched Burst, and I think he plans to watch Beyblade X. I talked to him about it briefly, um, probably a month ago. But he never really was able to make that transition into monetizing the stuff and being able to be as successful with it as um, a channel like Beyblade Geeks was able to. So his quality, the quality of his content, as far as the videos go, didn't improve until much, much later. Um, most of his stuff was still really low resolution and he continued to play music in the background. Um, his lighting wasn't amazing either, but the charm of his content was that he just had an obscene number of stadiums. And at the time he was really knowledgeable because he had everything. So a lot of his content sort of reflected like knowledge that wasn't as accessible or condensed as it is now. There wasn't a lot of resources. The plastics database didn't exist yet. The WBO, I, I 
was barely a thing at that point. Um, so it just, it was bad timing, unfortunately. So again, he's still into Beyblade and I think he still posts, although it's not Beyblade content anymore. I, his, his most recent video was six months ago and it was like God of War, a God of War video. Um, I think he had some success on the channel for a while doing Kingdom Hearts Union X stuff, which was a mobile game that is gone now. But I think he did fairly well with some of those videos and then the game sort of just dropped off. But I wanted to talk about it because I really wasn't sure. Like I knew Keyblader was an one of the oldest for sure, as far as putting content on YouTube, but I wasn't sure if he was the oldest as far as um, what would qualify as a Baytuber. And there's other Beyblade content that is older. Um, I think the oldest video is uh, probably an AMV or clips from the anime or whatever. But as far as a consistent Baytuber goes, I think Keyblader is the first. So. If you guys want to check out his channel again, I'll put a link down below. Feel free to drop, drop him a comment, um, letting you know how out, <laughs> letting him know how interested uh, in the different stadiums you are because the stadiums are cool. There's a lot of really cool stadiums. You'll have to get pa past like the 480p resolution of all of the videos, but otherwise, it's it's cool to see. It's a time capsule um, into not only like early gen Beyblade stuff, but really early YouTube stuff. Like, you know, this is back when people just filmed a video because they thought it was fun and just uploaded it onto YouTube. It wasn't this high scale, high production thing where now everybody has studio lights and mic setups and all of this stuff. It was just people having fun on the internet. And I kind of miss that, you know, it's, it's uh, a time that I'm very nostalgic for. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video, feel free to smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, feel free to do that as well. And I will see you guys in the next one.